During the discussion of communication of acceptance, it is important to learn a little bit about unilateral contracts. Why are they important to this discussion? They are an exception to the rule that acceptance must be communicated. The normal rules for offer and acceptance are often not applicable in the case of unilateral contracts or are only applicable with modification. Performance of a specific act or omission constitutes acceptance. What are unilateral contracts or as Lord Diplock referred to them, if contracts? If you find my lost dog, I will pay you 50 pounds. The essential point is that you, the promisee, must not themselves be promising to perform the condition. For example, if you promise to find the lost dog, the contract will be bilateral. Instead, you are simply being given the choice to perform. This act, which will amount to acceptance of the offer and will activate my obligation to pay you 50 pounds in return. In unilateral contracts, it will be quite clear in most cases that no promise is being made by the offeree in return. Wouldn't it be very unreasonable for you to promise me that you will find my dog? If a person explicitly did communicate in advance that he was accepting this type of offer, for example, of a reward for finding lost property, he would be in a danger of converting it into a bilateral contract, whereby he agrees or promises to find the property, or at least to spend a reasonable amount of time and effort searching for it. Whereas the essence of a unilateral contract is that the acceptor, the person to whom the offer is made, makes no promises to do anything. The objective approach will normally ensure that no such promise is being given or is to be implied.